Hello everyone. So in this video, we will be discussing again, still under the interest in money time relationships. Now we will be discussing continuous compounding interest. So from the previous video, we have discussed the compounding interest alone. So in this video, we'll be discussing the continuous compounding interest. So it is said that the continuous compounding interest has the formula of F is equivalent to P E raised to RT, where F is the future worth, P is the principal worth, and ERT is the continuous compounded amount factor, where R is the nominal rate of interest or the interest rate, and T is the number of years. And we also have the formula effective rate if compounded continuously. So this is the effective rate. So when we are discussing about effective rate, then we can use this formula. We have ER or the effective rate that is equivalent to E raised to R, where R is, again is the nominal interest rate and minus one. So these are the formulas that we will be using in solving continuous compounding interest. So we have here a few examples uh, under continuous compounding interest. First one is 100,000 is deposited in a bank that earns 5% compounded continuously. What will be the amount after 10 years? So again, we have 100,000, which is this deposited in a bank. So meaning to say 100,000 is our present worth or our principal amount, amount. And we have R or our interest rate, which is 5%. So that is 0.05. And we also have the time, which is the number of years, and that is equivalent to 10 years. So plugging that to our equation, which we have again, F is equivalent to P, E raised to RT. So if you plug that to our equation, we have F is equivalent to 100,000 multiplied by E raised to r, which is 0 0.05, and we have the t, which is equivalent to 10. So meaning to say our future worth, or after 10 years, uh, the 100,000 will become 164,872.13. So that is how we answer a, a continuous compound interest. Another example we have here, money is deposited in a certain amount, in a certain account for which interest is compounded continuously. If the balance doubles in six years, what is the annual percentage rate? So meaning to say, uh, what we are looking for this problem is the R, or R is our unknown, and the money here, let's say, for example, the money here is equivalent to 2. And it is aiming that after 6 years, the, num the money, which is 2, will double. So meaning to say, after 6 years, the money will become 4. So uh, plugging that to our equation, or let's just write here the given first. So meaning to say, our future worth now will become 4 if our present worth is 2. So the interest rate, we are looking for the interest rate and the time after six years. So uh, we are aiming that after six years, the money, which is two, will double. So that will become four. So plugging that to our equation, we have four is equivalent to two. And E raised to R, which is unknown, and our T, which is six. So uh, solving that in your calculator, you'll get 0 0.1155. And since we are looking for the percentage rate, then meaning to say you need to multiply your result by 100%. So we have 11.55% as our interest rate. Okay, another example we have here. A man wishes to have 40,000 in a certain fund at the end of eight years. So meaning to say, since the man wishes to have 40,000, meaning to say, she don't have, I mean, he don't have the 40,000 yet. So meaning to say that is our 
future worth. So if the man aims to have 40,000 after eight years, so our T is eight, how much should be invested in a fund? So I'm going to say we are looking for the present worth or the principal amount that the man needs to deposit and that will have 6% um, interest rate. So we have 6% or that is equivalent to 0 0.06. So how much should be invested or deposited in order for the man to get 40,000 after eight years? So plugging that to our equation again, we have 40,000 is equivalent to P, which is unknown, and then E raised to R, which is 0 0.06. And our time is 8, or our, um, our number of years is 8. So that is, um, in order for you to get the value of P, you can just um, divide both sides by E raised to RT. And that will give us P is equivalent to 24,751.34. So meaning to say, the man should deposit 24,751.34 cents now in order for him to get 40,000 after eight years. Okay, another example we have here. If the effective annual interest rate is 4%, compute the equivalent nominal interest compounded continuously. So meaning to say 4% uh, here is our effective annual interest rate or our ER. So ER is equivalent to 4% or equivalent to 0 0.04. So we are looking for the R or the nominal interest rate. So R is unknown. So from the formula, we have ER is equivalent to E raised to R minus one, right? So this was discussed earlier as well. So just plugging here, we have 0 0.04. And that is E raised to R, which is unknown, minus 1. So our R is equivalent to 0 0.0392. And since we are looking for the interest, meaning to say we need to have to find a percentage. So we'll multiply this by 100%. So that is now equivalent to 3.92%. So meaning to say 4% uh, in effective rate is equivalent to 3.92 in interest rate. So this is now our final answer. Next is, we have here the last example for this video. We have deposits of 35,000, 48,000, and 25,000 were made in a savings account eight years, five years, and two years ago respectively. Determine the accumulate amount in the account today if a withdrawal of 55,000 pesos was made four years ago. The applied interest rate is 11% compounded continuously. So how should we um, solve for the amount now or the, the total amount now after the withdrawal of 55,000 after the deposits of 35, 48, and 25,000 in different years. So in this case, we'll just need to track the years again backward. So let's say, for example, um, it's 2020 today. I'll just write it here. So again, let's say, for example, it is we are in 2020 today. So eight years backward, we have 2019, 2018, 2017, 2016, 2015, 2014. We also have 2013. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the last one, which is 2012. So it is said that uh, eight years ago, by uh, 2012, the man or the person deposited 35,000. So let's say we have 35,000 eight years ago. 
And then it is said that five years ago as well, he deposited 48,000. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So by 2015, he deposited again for 48,000 pesos. And two years ago, he deposited um, 25,000 pesos. So we have 25,000 pesos. But for, um, but f four years ago, a withdrawal of 55,000 was made. So meaning to say we have one, two, three, four. So four years ago, a withdrawal of 40,000 was, uh, I mean, 55,000 was made. So we need to find the accumulated amount that is in the account today. So how should we solve this kind of problem? So what we need to do first is we need to solve um, the 35,000 that was deposited eight years ago. So um, we need to um, count the years before it was withdrawn. So we have one, two, three, and four. So meaning to say, um, it already um, add up an interest of four years. So let's just uh, solve that one first. So we have F, which is 35,000, and E and our R is 0 0.11. And it just adds up 4% or four years of interest. So that gives us the equivalent of 54,344.75 after four years. So meaning to say, after four years, at 2016, um, the 35,000 become 54,344.75. Now, we also need to solve this one since it was deposited one year before the withdrawal. So, we have here F is equivalent to 48,000 times E raised to 0 0.11. And the accumulated years for the interest is 1 because um, that is before the the withdrawal was made. So we have one here for our interest. So if you solve this one, you'll get 53,581.35 pesos. So meaning to say by 2016, the man already have 54 plus 53. So the man already have 54 1344.75 plus 53,581.35. So in total, that is equivalent to 107,926.1. So that is the total amount uh, um, by 2016. But again, by 2016, he withdrawed he withdrawed um, 55,000. So, I mean to say this money here, the future amount here is deducted or subtracted by 55,000 because of the withdrawal that was made. So, from 107,000, it become 52,926.1. So, meaning to say by 2016, the money that was left in the bank is only 52,926.1. But then again, uh, 52,926 has accumulated another interest of 11% for another four years. So we have one, two, three, and four. So we'll need to solve that one again. So we have F is equivalent to 52,000, which is the present amount of the money now, 0.1 multiplied by E, so we have multiplied by E raised to um, 0 0.11 and another four years of interest. So that will give us the result of 82,178.1. So that is for the 52. However, um, by two years ago, 
he made again another deposit, which is 25,000. So meaning to say, um, we'll also need to find the interest of 25,000. So we have 25,000 E raised to 0 0.11, and that is for two years. So again, um, if solving this one, we have 31,152, I mean 151.92 pesos. So meaning to say after, so now meaning to say uh, the money is this one plus this one. So if you try to add that one, the future amount now is or the present amount now is 82,178.74 plus 31,151.92 so that will give us the amount the total amount of 113,330.66 so meaning to say now uh, the 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 man or the person has 113,330.66 in the bank. So those are all the discussion for the continuous compounding interest. So I'll see you again on the next video for, or the next session for the um, upcoming discussion. So I hope you've learned something from this video and please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you. Have a great day.